My friend Tom is such a crazy sock knitter that we call him the Sockinator. He has a wonderful loom knitting group on Facebook called Socks a la Loom in which he is leading a knit along. To make sure that we have enough support materials for new sock knitters, I'm adding to my Sockumentaries list. All of the Sockumentaries will be useful to you, but the ones that begin with this intro are specific. Okay, sock knitters, forgive my voice. I'm not in my best voice today, but we'll do our best. My sock has already got its top and its heel knitted, and I am working on the foot length. And I just want to help you out with your foot length. This is nothing but knitting around and around in the tube. So I'm going to knit around and around it, making my foot tube while we discuss what's involved in deciding about your foot length. The technique is nothing but going around and around the loom. No mystery there. The question is, how long of a foot do you need? Now you've made your swatch, so you know how many stitches and rows per inch. I'm gonna use some round numbers here that are not my actual numbers to make it easy for you to conceptualize the math. Then with a paper, pencil, and calculator, you'll do your real math. Just say my foot is 10 inches long and I'm getting 10 stitches per inch. That would mean that the whole length of my sock, including the toe and heel, needs to be 100 rows, right? 10 inches of foot length times 10, times 10 stitches per inch, 100 rows. Easy peasy. However, you've got some foot length already taken up with your toe and heel. And you've got some choices about how to figure that out. My favorite way, and the one I put forward with multiple charts in the book, and, is to figure out exactly how many rows are involved in the toe and heel and subtract them from the total count. That's maximally accurate, and it's also foolproof. Now, Tom has suggested a shortcut, and he's 100% right. We're talking here about our friend the Sockinator, Tom. If you know where your heel meets your foot right there, then you know that you don't need this distance added to the foot. It's already there and you know that your toe will be the same shape as the heel in almost every case. So you can sub just subtract this distance or even measure your foot where a pair of socks is on you and say, oh, well, of my 10 inches, fictional, remember, of my 10 inch length, four is taken up with the toe and heel, so I need six down the foot. Then with our imaginary 10 rows per inch, we'd say, aha, we need 60 rows. And that would be perfectly clear and easy. There are some other shortcuts that I'm not as partial to. One rule of thumb is just to subtract an inch. Can't quite see what I'm doing. I'm working behind the camera here. Subtract an inch for the toe and an inch for the heel, which with some methods of making the toe and heel and some gauges is close to accurate. I don't mean to criticize if it's working for you, but since I work with all kinds of yarn and I don't make my toes and heels identical for everybody, I find that I would like to be more exact. Now I make for myself, these socks are for me, a very prominent and well-defined heel. I short row in to narrower than some people. And my first short row takes place on an entire half of the pegs. For example, here, this is 64 pegs. So I start with peg one, actually knit to peg 32. Don't wrap it, but knit all there. And my first wrapped peg is the next one over for me. And then I go back and I short row in quite far. And the result, as you can see, is quite a lot of heel distance and quite a lot of heel shape. That's because this matches the shape of my foot. 
Now, if you were knitting for somebody else who had a different shape of feet, you wouldn't have as much distance down the length of the heel where I'm showing you with my tool. Because if you started, for example, many people wrap knit this peg and wrap this peg for their first row. So you have already created a slightly less lengthy heel. It's going to be two rows shorter than mine, even if everything else about our socks is the same. And I short row in to quite narrow. Uh, for example, this was a 32 peg heel. And you re the rule of thumb is we decide, divide those 32 pegs into three to determine how many go into hold at the left and how many go into hold at the right and how many are still being knitted in the middle on the shortest row. So in this example, 32 does not divide evenly by 3. I would have the choice of putting 10 slowly into hold on the left, 10 slowly into hold on the right, and leaving 12 on my shortest row knitting. Or the opposite, what I did is I short rowed in farther. I put 11 gradually into hold on each side. So my shortest row was 10. Some people, not many, but some might even want to go farther. Well, the farther you go in, the more rows you are knitting. The more rows you knit, the more distance the heel and the toe will take up. I hope that's becoming clear. So in my personal case, um, my total number of rows we'll use the fictional 100 again, would be shortened by 24, no, 22 at each end. If I did as I said, and I I'm short road to the point that 11 stitches were in hold on the left and 11 stitches were in hold on the right, by the time I go in and out, the length down the heel or the toe is 22 rows. So you add the heel and toe together, and that means I have already knitted 44 rows of the necessary 100. Remember, that's what we're pretending I'm knitting. 44 of my 100 are done, and I believe, if I'm doing it correctly in my head, that would leave 56 rows, truly rounds, because we're going round and round, not left and then right. I should knit 56 rounds down the foot before I begin the toe. Now, can we make this any simpler? Mm, not really and be this accurate. I'm sorry about that, but that's the nature of knitting socks. And you can use a rule of thumb and round numbers and get a pretty good sock. I personally don't want a pretty good sock. I want a perfect sock. So that's why I'm fussy about this. Some things matter more than others. In a slipper sock, I don't care nearly as much about the perfection of the fit as I do if my sock is going inside my shoe where the slightest amount of imperfection I find very irritating. I'm a little bit like the princess and the pea about my socks and my shoes. Some of you might be more reasonable about it. But I figure Walmart exists for socks that will basically do the job. The ones that I knit, I want to be just exactly precisely the way I want them. Now, when you knit this many rows, it's a total pain to keep up with them. You can take a piece of paper and mark off rows. You can use a clicker. But if the phone rings, there's such a chance you're going to forget. I think you can see daylight through this knitting. It's stretched out as it is. That's good news because I'll show you how I get around counting. I don't actually count. I count at this point. See me poking this tool into one of the little openings? That opening represents a row. I'm trying to see if I can see on the film. Okay, yeah, pretty well. One, above the next rung into the next hole, two above the next rung on this little ladder into the next hole is row three, 
four. That's from where I started counting, of course. And I'm counting up like that. Now, a yarn like this is a great help to an even knitter because this is a reliable repeat. And I can go back here and count the little heart-shaped stitches and be pretty certain that I'm going to get the same number of rows as I have along here whenever this repeat occurs. Starting at the bottom of the gray band, one, two rows. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. So from my thumb to my tool, thirteen rows. This pattern occurs later on in the sock. I'm actually right about there now. And I see the white coming up. I can pretty well rely that I, as an even knitter, have also knitted 13 rows for this part of the pattern. And that is not the only way I would count, but it's a great help with double checking. So actually, I'm getting close. I have another one to two inches, I think, I need to do my counting before I'm ready to knit the toe when I'm getting there. So I hope this little segment of the video helps you understand what's involved in knitting the foot. The knitting itself is the easiest part of the entire sock. The only challenge you've got is you really want to get the right length. So it is worth doing your swatch, washing your swatch, and counting carefully. But you do not need to be dismayed if you lose count because I just told you how to figure out how many rows you have knitted. See you later.